Okay, welcome back to another video. So we're going to do a real quick whistle stop network tour in this one. It's going to be uh, really interesting. But before we can get into that, we've got to really quickly we've got to put install this switch because currently there's a Netgear one. So we're going to install this, and then we also got to change the CPU and RAM in this Dell Parage T310. So this is my main server at the moment, but we'll get into that in the network tour section. So we're going to jump straight into a real quick. Probably time lapse of me installing some new RAM and CPU in this. So, this is the Intel Core i3. And now, this is the new. Xeon processor. So I'm going to have to clean the old thermal grease off of here and then we're going to put some new stuff on. Okay, so closing CPU socket. Now this is the thermal grease we're going to use. It's not exactly no thermal grizzly stuff, but it's only cheap eBay. But it'll work and will be better than nothing. There we go. And the cooler now gonna get back on. Okay, so I've got it minimally put back together. It has booted in fact. Look at that, bloody hell. 16 gigs, quad core, brilliant. Power down, get it back installed. Right, switch is installed, so we should be able to plug it in and get light. Um, now I like to keep with my patch leads the number on the patch panel equal to the number of the switch, so it's easy to identify. And one of the things I'm really excited about this switch is I've got four 10 gigabit SFT plus ports. Can't use them at the moment, but they will be really nice for the future. Okay, so we're going to get straight into a network tour. So starting from the top, obviously you got the patch panel. So this has got 21 things in it at the moment. Um, all of these labelled apps, this one doesn't work and a couple of them aren't used, but there's, there is 21 wires in the back of this. This is the switch you've just seen me install, so it is the D-Link DGS1510-52. Uh, not exactly a new switch, but still a lot better than the one I had before. Uh, more features as well as the more ports, not to mention the 10 gig. And then you've got your two PDUs, so this is for your C13 connectors, and then this is just regular power. Um, yeah, and then you've got the CCTV, and then there's an Avea phone system. Uh, it's turned on now, doesn't need to be on, but um, this is for some Avea phones. Now, this is my main server, this is a Dell PowerEdge R710. Um, unfortunately, it's not running now, uh, just because of the UK power crisis. Um, this is the one that runs everything, so this has got dual 8-core CPUs, um, as well as 32 gigs of RAM. So this is what everything usually runs on. This is a HP DL120. So it's currently got a Pentium inside of it and 8 gigs of RAM. What I'm going to do is put, take, put the i3 we've just taken out of the server downstairs in this one. This is kind of like my backup server and when, like, my overflow one. Um, this is only on for half of the time. And then this is the PowerEdge 2950. Um, two dual-core CPUs in it, 8 gigs of RAM. Not particularly amazing, 
but it's got some nice high capacity drives in. So this is my backup server. Then of course you've got a monitor and then there's the KVM. So this is only two ports. So this does um, the HP and the CCTV. The two Dells have got VGA on the front. So I just have to plug into the front for them. Uh, so that, that concludes the front of the rack. We're going to take you around the back now. And um, so this is the back of the rack. It's nowhere near as neat, but you can see you've got all the cables coming out the patch panels. There's not a huge lot to see here. You've got this PoE injector for a little Wi-Fi aerial we've got outside. Um, that's not being used though. You've got the backs of all the servers. Um, like I say, it's definitely not as neat. Interesting thing about this one is it's actually got an aerial connection in it. Um, because we can use this as a Plex DVR and to record live TV. Like I say, if it was turned on and if I could use that one. Um, it's quite old, so it's not very power efficient. But So yeah, all the cables kind of come out. They go through a hole in the bottom of the rack. And then... You can see there's a nice bundle of cables coming out that disappear off around the house and go to Ethernet jacks like... This one. And this one. Whatever the hell this is. This too. And these... Four. In the case of my room, this there's this little five port gigabit switch which goes into my laptop dock, and I've also got this handy pull out cable for whenever you're doing things, very useful. And then, of course, we've got um, what is currently my main server. So this is the one we just upgraded. This is what's running the network and doing all of my VMs, everything like that. Um, it runs Proxmox, like we. Uh, like we've just got um, 4 cores, 8 threads, 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, it's currently only got one 2 terabyte disk, which is a bit annoying. But like we say, just due to power draw, I can't be running the big ones. Then there's also a little cheapo UPS. Um, not very good, only about 5 minutes of runtime, But um, better than nothing. You'll see there's a cable coming out the ceiling there and it goes across and um, into the side of the garage. And that eventually makes its way, comes out this hole and goes into this little TP-Link Wi-Fi router thing, just in access point mode, which does the Fire Stick on the TV and the Alexa, which is down there, as well as just extends coverage into the garage. And then you'll also see on the side of the house there, there's a little antenna. And that's what that PoE injector was for that you would have saw earlier. And that's not in an optimum place it could do with moving, really. During the video you will have seen this, so this is our access point, currently it's just sat on this desk and plugged into the network port. Um, this is the one I'd be like to be using, but it's got a broken ethernet jack on the back of it. Um, that we can fix it though, uh, actually you haven't got around to it yet. Um, so we're using this, this one's only 100 meg, but this one's a... Uh, this one will do 150 megabit over Wi-Fi, and it's got a gigabit uplink, so that one's more than faster than this one, that, that one's significantly better. But I'm stuck with this. Um, I would like to get a proper ceiling mount one, um, but they're a bit of money. Money which I do not have at the moment. We'll see how we go though. Of course the dream is to go unify, but that is way even more money. Okay, so now looking at some of the, some of the common software I use. So of course you've got PFSense for the router, Proxmox as a server host, um, Portana for Docker management, FreePBX for the phones, Nginx Proxy Manager for URLs and Remote Management, TrueNAS for File Storage, and then Windows Server for Minecraft and everything else you use Windows Server for. There we go. Just as a quick side note, I've recently acquired about nine, no, not 90, uh, 63 IP telephones. Um, so I've got a bunch of these. There's a really fancy LCD one and then a couple of better ones over there. Um, these are going to be resold eventually. If you want to see a video on something with these, shout me out in the comments down below. It also came with these two 48 port um, 10100 Cisco PoE switches, um, that D-Link which I've just installed upstairs, and two of these um, Huawei routers. Um, not had time to play around with them, but they should be some fun. This is my first hands-on with Enterprise stuff, we'll see how that goes. Ring ring. I'm just going to say a massive thank you for watching. Um, this is, I know a lot of my videos are not that interesting, but oh well. Um, if you've made it this far, please subscribe because I've got a lot of stuff coming. Uh, if you want to see a video on the phones you saw downstairs, leave a comment because uh, I need to find a way of making that interesting. Um, I've got a lot of people asking for like tutorials, so uh, again, if you're interested in something like that, I'm thinking of doing like an ultimate guide to 
home lab, so it'd be like how to install Proxmox, how to install PSSense on Proxmox, what software should you use, um, and kind of like bring it all together so it all interconnects and then you can either watch each episode individually or not. Uh, if anyone has any information on these Huawei routers, um, this is the AR1220V, um, there's not a lot on the internet. Uh, I also get a lot of people saying, doesn't this overheat being in the loft? And the answer is yes, it does get quite warm up here. And it also gets quite cold sometimes. But we're in the UK, so most of the time it's fine. Uh, the cold can just be solved by putting a duvet over the top of the rack. Uh, and the heat is a bit more of a problem, but it's only a couple of days, so it's it's not a major problem. I do have a little Wi-Fi temperature humidity sensor in there, so it can like alert me on my phone uh, if it's really bad. Um, but like I said, we haven't had many issues, and honestly, it, not a lot is running other than the switch and um, the CCTV. There's not a lot that's doing anything, so um, for now at least, it's it's not a big deal. We're kind of coming out of summer now anyway. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe. Bye.